Hi, my name is Rich Harrington and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline for Premiere Pro. Today we're going to look at a companion product which is Adobe Bridge. And you might not think of using Bridge as part of your workflow, but I'm going to show you a really cool use today. Now, there's a really standard problem that keeps popping up with tapeless acquisition, and that is the fact that it's difficult to name your clips. You get these gobbledygook names of numbers and characters, and they're all over the place. Now, if you're using a camera like a P2 camera from Panasonic or an XD cam from Sony, they're actually generating unique numbers for each clip, and that's good. That means in a particular project, every source clip has its own unique number. However, those numbers don't really tell you anything about the clip, so it could still be confusing. The real danger lies, though, when using cameras like DSLR cameras, where it just uses an auto number system. So if you're on a multi-camera shoot, you can get back multiple cameras that called their first clip MVI-001. All of a sudden, you've got a media management nightmare where all the clips have the exact same numbers. Well, fortunately, we can get around that by using Bridge and just taking the time to batch rename our clips. Here's how it works. So I'm in Adobe Bridge, and there's lots of different ways to work with Bridge. You'll see up across the top different workspaces. So a film strip workspace, so you can click on individual clips. Notice you can actually play the video and watch it. And this is nice, real-time playback of clips if you want to browse. If you want larger thumbnails, you can just drag the slider down here. You can also assign star ratings to your clips. Unfortunately, this metadata doesn't come back over to Premiere Pro, but hopefully that'll be something Adobe tweaks in the future. But we've got all this stuff in here. It's working really well. And you see we even have a metadata workspace, so we can see lots of details about the particular files that are selected. Now, normally, I just use the Essentials workspace, and I drag things around a little bit here so I could see my clips and actually see the clips over here with a little player window. Now, the whole reason we went into Bridge was to rename our clips so they are a little more organized. Here's how that works. You can go ahead and select multiple clips. So in this case, I'm going to grab all the concert clips, and I'm just control clicking to select those. If it's easier for you, you could drag the slider there to get a smaller preview. And now I have just those clips selected. I'm then going to batch rename these clips with a more descriptive name. To do that, I choose Tools, Batch Rename. And this brings up a new dialog box that gives you a lot of control on how the clips are renamed. Let's go ahead here and rename these in the same folder. And I'm going to use some text here. I'm going to give this a project name. And we're going to call this LB for the musician's initials and concert underscore. I'm then going to tell it to take the date created. And see here we've got date and time and I could choose from different options here. I'm going to use the original creation date and a formula of month, day, and year with two digits. But there's lots of options there to choose from. I could then go ahead and assign some unique text and what I'm going to do is just put a spacer in there, the underscore, to put a little separation between the dates and my new number. And then I'm going to add a sequential number. And I'll do that using, in this case, just a three-digit number. So that would cover up to 999 clips. If you got less than 100 clips, like we do here, maybe I'll just go with that two-digit number. But either case, it's very straightforward. You look it all over. I highly recommend this one little option here called Preserve Current File Name and XMP Metadata. And what that does is, even though the clips are renamed, it still has the camera original name tucked inside the metadata for the file. That makes it a lot easier when you go back and look. You could browse and bridge and find the original camera name in case you ever needed to cross-reference from maybe notes you got from the DP or the shooter to what the editor is doing. That looks really good. I've got everything all set there. And I'm just going to click the Rename button, and those clips will get renamed. You see there, it's all done. I could do other things inside a bridge here, like actually make a new folder. And I could call this folder Concert Footage. Grab those and just tuck them all in. Make another folder here called Music Video. Let's go ahead and switch back to Premiere Pro. And we could choose File Import. Grab our media folder.
and import that whole folder. And you see if we open that up, all the media came in. That worked out great. There's all the clips. They're renamed. We open them up there. And you see they play just like any other clip, but they have the more descriptive name that we've assigned to it. Let's jump back over to Bridge for another minute here. Notice we could view as list and even sort by file size or kind of file. There's the preview files that Premiere Pro creates once you import. But if I needed to, I could even come in here to the keywords or the metadata and assign extra information about the particular clips, making it to have information about copyright, dates where things were shot, cities, all sorts of things, and it works out great. So, I hope you see there how Adobe Bridge, which is part of Production Premium, and of course comes with Photoshop and other tools, can be completely useful to your workflow when using Adobe Premiere Pro. For Creative Cow, my name is Rich Harrington, and I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net where there's a ton of great forums and tutorials that you should check out to help you get more out of Adobe Premiere Pro. Thanks again.